Hi, this is Simon Upstill. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial from Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this electric lightning effect. Now, one of the things we need to take care of in terms of this project is the lightning itself. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this particular tutorial. There is another tutorial that I'll link to in the comments that deals with the main build of this project. And if you simply want to skip ahead to that, I will be providing a link to the pre-rendered lightning element. Now, unlike After Effects, Motion doesn't come with a nice handy built-in lightning generator. So we have to find a way of making our own. And I've looked at lots of different possible procedural methods, and eventually I came to the conclusion that the best way is simply to effectively draw it, but with a little extra procedural stuff on top of that to, to simplify things. So I'm in a new project here. It's 1920 by 1920, so 1920 square. I've chosen 24 frames a second, and I want 20 seconds worth of duration. I'm going to select the Bezier tool and I'm just going to come to the HUD to make sure everything's set up right. Don't want to fill, I want the outline turned on, a width of 10 pixels is good, and let's make that color white. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a zigzag line that starts at the bottom of the screen and makes its way to the top. And we're going to try and make sure to click every step of the way so we don't have any smooth corners. And then we're going to hit return to close it up. I'm just going to draw over all of that to make sure they're all selected, turn, turning on the overlays, and just make sure they're all linear like that. So then what I want to do is I want to style this. So I'm going to come to the shape, outline, select airbrush. And what we're going to do is open up the stroke parameters here. Opacity over stroke, I'm going to click on the top there. I'm going to move this one in a bit so that's like roughly about 40%. This one here, I'm going to set its value down to around 20. You can see what, what that's doing is just fading off the top just a little bit. And we'll do the same thing with the width. Let's alt click somewhere around here and then drag this value down and you'll see that that's now tapering the top. And that just looks a lot better than what we started with. And there's one other thing we need to do, which is to come down to the anchor point tool, make sure we've got our overlays turned on. And what we want to do is we want to line up that anchor point with the bottom there. Good idea to just zoom in just to make sure you've got that bang on because that'll just make life a little bit easier for the next part. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this a number of times now. The more of these you make, the better this is going to look, but I'm just going to do four altogether. So you could either right click duplicate or you could use the command D shortcut. So I'm going to do that. One, two, three. So now I've got four copies altogether. So then what we're going to do with our overlays turned on, our edit points tool selected, we're going to come to the second layer there and we're just going to change it up. And really, it doesn't really matter what you do, you just want something different for each one. It's a little bit laborious, but it actually is quite a lot of fun really. And this is worth just relaxing into it. It's the kind of job that, you know, at some point, if you're doing motion graphics or visual effects, there comes a point where you just have to knuckle down and do the hard work. And, you know, it's kind of relaxing in a way, so I don't mind it. I'm leaving that bottom one tethered to the same spot because I think that's a good idea. So we've just got a single origin, but the rest we can just go as crazy as we like with it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is going to make each one of these last just one frame. So I'm going to open up the video timeline so you can see what I mean here. Let's make sure we're at the beginning of the project. With this bottom one selected, we're going to hit I and O on the keyboard. We're going to step forward one frame. We're going to move up to the next layer. Hit I and O on the keyboard. Step forward one frame. Move up one layer. I, O on the keyboard move up to the next layer, step forward one frame, I know on the keyboard. So now we've got a sequence of those four like that. So I say, you'll want a lot more, but I'm just showing you the principle of this. Again, let's never get back to the start of the sequence. 
and we're going to make a clone of this bottom layer here. So right click make clone layer, or better still use the K shortcut, which is what I'll be doing here. So K to make a clone. I've opened up all my position, rotation and scale parameters here so we can adjust those. I'm going to start off by changing the Y scale to 60%. And then what I can do is I can just move it up and I want to find one of those intersections and then just adjust it. So I find a nice intersection like that. Uh, let's duplicate that clone, right click duplicate. We could rotate it like so, maybe move it up to the next joint, something like that. Scaling it in on X reduces the jaggedness, which is good for some of these smaller ones. So basically I'm going to do that for all four of these. You don't always have to have two branches. Sometimes you can have just one. Sometimes you don't need any branches at all. So really just vary it. So let's do the next one. We'll step forward one frame. Here's our Bezier. K to make a clone. Y scale to around 60. Just to get us started, find a point. Let's rotate it away like that. You know, we could, we could use this, we could turn on the overlays to do that, something like that. Maybe scale that down a little bit more, scale it in on X. So that's the idea, just creating a completely random thing. But just look for these joints here where it's a little bit more natural for this fork to come off. So once we've done that, we've got a sequence like that. So we're going to close up this group here and we're going to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And then from that clone, we're going to come to Object and we're going to choose Replicate. Let's choose Line. Let's zero out the positions. And we just want one point. Because really all we're using the Replicate for here is to cycle through the frames that we've created. And what we're going to do down here is to make sure that play frames is on, which it is by default, but also that random start frames is on. And then let's have two for the hold frames and two for the hold frames randomness. And we need to turn off our base layer to see what's going on here. And you'll see now we've got this cycling animation that looks like that. So then I'm going to turn this group to fixed resolution and I'm going to apply a distortion bulge to it. I'm going to set the amount to something like 750 and the scale up to 0.75. And what this is going to do is going to just distort the, the, the center of the effect. So if I animate the X position, you can see how that's working. So in order to make that animated, I'm going to open this up, select the X position, add parameter behavior, randomize, and Let's switch to add and subtract. 0.1 is good for the amount. Let's reduce that frequency down to four. And it's just helping to give a bit more randomness to this effect. So let's add another filter. I'm going to come to stylize and I'm going to add bad TV. So let's have a waviness of 20. Let's cancel out the roll. Let's up static to one and let's turn down scan line brightness. We don't need any of that. So what that's doing is it's, let's turn the saturation down as well, because we don't need that. So it's just giving us a little bit more roughness. Uh, and because Bad TV is animated, it's going to just fizz a little bit more, a little bit more like lightning. So I think that's going to work better. Let's also add filters, stylize, crystallize. Let's set the size down to three. And that also is just giving us a bit more breakup just more organic, less look, looking like a drawn line. So that works. And it's also got a little bit of animation in the crystallized, so it's, it's helping things as well. So then to introduce yet more randomness into it, I'm going to make a clone of this group. So we're making clones of clones of clones, and this is something you can actually do, surprisingly. So let's close up the original. So what, the reason I made a clone is I want to add a retiming behavior to this. So I'm going to come to behaviors, retiming and I'm going to look for flash frame. And what this does is it randomly inserts different parts of the animation into the sequence. So I'm going to go for 15 and 15. And that's making it a lot more random, despite the fact we've only got four frames to cycle through. It's really not too bad. Obviously, if we had 
you know, something like 12, 20 frames, it's, it, it'll, it'll look really, really good. So that's basically our effect. And we can come to Share, Export Movie. We'll need to select ProRes 444. And we'll come to our Elements folder and call this Lightning Base. And render that out. So I hope you can join me again for the next part. Thanks very much for watching and stay safe.